My name is Sam Bucknin, and I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. <clears throat> the grandiose fantasies of the narcissist inevitably and invariably clash with his drab, routine, and mundane reality. We call this constant dissonance between reality and fantasy the grandiosity gap. Sometimes the gap is so yawning that even the narcissist, however dimly, recognizes its existence. And still, this insight into his real situation, into the abyss between imagination and what's really happening, this insight fails to alter the narcissist's behavior. The narcissist knows that his grandiose fantasies are incommensurate with his real accomplishments, with his knowledge, his status, actual wealth, or lack thereof, physical constitution, or sex appeal. And still, he keeps believing as though this were untrue, as though his fantasy and reality fully match, and the former is firmly grounded in the latter. The situation is further exacerbated by periods of relative success in the narcissist's past. Has been and also ran narcissists suffer from a grandiosity hangover. They may have once been rich, famous, powerful, brilliant, or sexually irresistible, but they no longer are. And still they continue to behave as though little has changed. The balding, pot-bellied narcissist courts women aggressively. The impoverished tycoon sinks deeper into debts, trying to maintain an unsustainable and lavish lifestyle. The one author novel, the one novel author, and the one discovery scholar, still demand professional difference and expect attention by media and superiors alike. The once potent politician maintains regal airs and holds court in great pomp. The wizened actress demands special treatment and progresses chronologically. as frequently as do narcissistic individuals. It is not uncommon to come across a group of people who still live in a bygone era, glorious past. This mass pathology, mass psychosis, is self-reinforcing. Members feed on each other's delusions, pretensions and lies. Ostrich-like, they bury their collective head in the sand of time, harking back to happier moments of omnipotent submissions and omnipresence. It's a shared psychosis on a mass scale. The grandiosity hangover and the grandiosity gap are the two major vulnerabilities of the narcissist. By exploiting these two, the narcissist can be effortlessly manipulated. This is especially true when the narcissist is confronted with authority, finds himself in an inferior position, on or when his narcissistic supply is deficient or uncertain. There are a few things that the narcissist finds devastating. Any statement of fact which seems to contradict his inflated perception of his grandiose self. Any criticism, disagreement, exposure of fake achievements, belittling of talents and skills which a narcissist self-imputes or fantasizes that he possesses. Any hint that the narcissist is actually subordinated, subjugated, controlled, owned or dependent on a third party. Any description of the narcissist as average and common, indistinguishable from many others. Any hint that the narcissist is weak, needy, dependent, efficient, slow, not intelligent, naive, gullible, susceptible, not in the know, manipulated, or a victim. The narcissist is likely to react with rage to all these, and in an effort to re-establish his fantastic grandiosity, his inflated ego, he is likely to expose facts and stratagems that he had 
no conscious intention of exposing. The narcissist reacts with narcissistic rage, hatred, aggression or violence to an infringement and breach of, a, of what he perceives to be his entitlement. Narcissists believe that they are so unique and that their lives are so cosmically significant that others should differ to their needs and cater to their every whim without ado. The narcissist feels entitled to special treatment by unique individuals over and above the regular Joe Schmo. Any insinuation, hint, intimation or direct declaration that the narcissist is not special at all, that he is average, common, not even sufficiently idiosyncratic to warrant a fleeting interest, will inflame the narcissist. Add to this negation of the narcissist's sense of entitlement and, become, and um, attack on his uniqueness, and the combustion is inevitable. Tell the narcissist that he does not deserve the best treatment, that his needs are not everyone's priority, that he is boring, that uh, he can be catered to by an average practitioner, a medical doctor, an accountant, lawyer, psychiatrist, that he and his motives are transparent and can be easily gorged, that he will do what he is told, that his step at entrance will not be tolerated, that no special concessions will be made to accommodate his inflated sense of self, that he is subject to procedures in court, elsewhere. Tell him any of this, and the narcissist will lose control. Narcissist believes that he is the cleverest, far above the madding crowd. When contradicted, exposed, humiliated or berated, when told you are not as intelligent as you think you are, or who is really behind all this, it takes sophistication which you don't seem to have, or so you don't have formal education, or uh, you are old, you are weak, or God forbid, you are stupid. What did you do in your life? Did you complete your studies? Do you have a degree? Did you establish or run a business? Would you define yourself as a success? Would your children share your view that you are a good father? Um, and so on. Any such attacks implied or direct on the narcissist's uniqueness and he blows his lid. Many of these questions cannot be asked outright in a variety of social settings. But if a narcissist stops you, harasses you, threatens you, use these sentences, they will make him go away. 